This is the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less. Ever wish you could re-listen to your favorite interview or segment? Do you enjoy hearing older shows for the first time in years? Then the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less is just what you need. Thanks for listening and enjoy the show. Hello, everyone. John Soberg here, your host for the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less. And today's show is being brought to you by The Butcher Shop, purveyors of highly sought after 100% Australian non cross bread, Lara 9 Plus Briskets, and as always, handpicked just for you. The Butcher Shop has been retailing the finest meats for the past 15 years. Every week, they're shipping out competition quality meats to many of the biggest teams in the competition scene across the nation. Simply put, teams who use The Butcher Shop win and win often. You may not be a competitor, but I know you still want some of the finer cuts. Great news. The Butcher Shop is shipping some of the finest prime, dry-aged Australian Wagyu and Japanese Wagyu steaks to people just like you and me who aspire to be the kings and queens of the cul-de-sac. The Butcher Shop always has Berkshire, Compart Duroc, Allegiance Duroc, and Prairie Fresh all-natural pork in stock. And again, always handpicked for you. You might be saying, John, all that sounds fantastic, but I would like something exotic. Rest easy knowing the butcher shop can get you an elk steak or maybe even a camel roast. Yes, camel. So let's review. The best competition briskets, check. The best pork selection, check. Giving you better overall options to cook at home, check. So please give the butcher shop a call today. 850-458-8782. That's 850-458-8782. You can also reach out to them on Facebook, facebook.com slash the butcher shop. Shop is spelled S-H-O-P-P-E. The Butcher Shop, home of the 100% Australian non-crossbred Wailara briskets. And here's what's going on today. I try to avoid recurring guests because I don't want to have an overlap because my production workflow is a little different than the live show. But sometimes things are just too good and you got to roll the dice. Time, it is of course Meathead from Amazing. <laughs> Meathead, what the hell is going on with you? Look at that guy. Oh, what are you talking about? Well, you're gl- you look that perhaps you were like diving into a bong or something crazy like that. Well, look no. at those eyes! My I guess that gave me a little grief about um, having a glass of wine to finish the show, making sure apples aren't ready. All right, we're good. So uh, here, here it is. Of course, the uh, the song that is taking. Billboard and R&B charts by storm. It is your theme song. Ribs don't come easy. It's a game of time and temp. We've talked about it before, Meathead, but never have the words so effortlessly flowed out of the pencil onto paper, right? Oh, it's a big week. Oh, a, a week? <laughs> it's, it, it's, uh, it took you a week to record it, not to write it, right? Uh, who can remember two weeks ago? That's right. It was uh, such a long time ago. Again, uh, we're with Meathead Goldwyn. And again, he is the creator of the most heavily trafficked barbecue and grilling forum out there right now. It's called AmazingRibs.com if you've never uh, seen it. All right, Meathead, let's get right into it. We've been kind of going back and forth a little bit about uh, your assertion that I am misrepresenting you now to the many tens and twenties <coughs> of pitmasters across the land since maybe a year and a half ago now, where we talked the first time, differences between barbecue and grilling. Is there a difference? Is there not? Let me go ahead and speak my piece first, and then I will give you... Nay, you're the guest. You go ahead and give your assertion exactly the way it should be. I don't want to misrepresent you in any way. The floor is yours. Well, great. When you run out of things to say to your guests, you always ask them if they Wait, believe what the as hell Meathead you? does. When I run There's out of no things to say. There's no difference between barbecue and grilling. Mm-hmm. And I've never said such a thing. No, I've never said um, that. I've tried You're a liar. to explain that American history, the culinary history, the culinary technical aspects, and the linguistics of the word barbecue. And try to explain how the word came to be. And how it is used in common usage and how it's been used down through history, not just verbally on this show, but I've documented this ad nauseum on my website in an article called Barbecue Defined with 
quotes from everybody from Samuel Johnson down through James Beard. Who? And Samuel Johnson wrote the first dictionary. Never heard of him. Well, get that big stuff out of here. <laughs> you probably haven't looked at a dictionary in a while. Never. And that's why we're arguing about the definition of barbecue. Um, but uh, what? tell me what your definition of barbecue is. Look, Meathead, we could have this conversation all day long, and people were going to be enthralled because my uh, command of the English vernacular is seismic and gargantuan. I am uh, have a what people would say a rapist's wit. Now listen, here's what I'm saying. <laughs> here's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm not here to dispute or get into technical differences with what barbecue the definition is. I'm here merely stating this. Barbecuing and grilling are two different cooking methods. To me, barbecue is between, uh, let's say, 180 or 200 degrees on a low end, going up to, let's say, 250, maybe to 275 on a high end. And it's done indirect. It's done with wood smoke. It's done with typical your typical bigger cuts of meat, your briskets, your pork butts, uh, ribs, uh, whole pieces of uh, ch- well, chicken pieces too, whole chickens, whatever you want to call it. And then there's grilling done at a high temperature, direct heat. So you have meat, you have a grill grate, and then you have whatever the heat source may be, charcoal or propane gas or whatever the case may be, the heating element, you name it. And it's done with thinner meats, hamburgers, hot dogs, steaks, typically done in the 15 to 20 minute range. Of course, we could branch off totally into offset or uh, indirect grilling, but I'm just talking about the two main. So to me, these are two different cooking methods. So one doesn't necessarily fall under the other. They're completely separate to me. I'm not arguing. Well, that's to you. I'm now, not let's arguing talk definition about what of barbecue. history and uh, the facts and culinary arts say. All right. Are we are, are we overlapping? I'm, I'm, I'm. Let me just shut down the screen here. There we go. Oh, you look fine to me. Okay. No, I think uh, I had the uh, the screen overlapping. All right. Uh, historically, the word derives from the word barbacoa. Barbacoa was a wooden rack built by Caribbean Indians, and they originally cooked lizard, snakes, and fish high above a fire where they mostly just smoked it and cured it. So that's where it comes from originally. Now, a lot of barbecue aficionados like to say barbecue is the world's first cooking style. Caveman barbecued meat, and it's the oldest cooking style there is. But if you think about it, what they did was they took a piece of meat and threw it on hot coals. By your definition, that's not barbecue. It's grilling. That's grilling. Absolutely. Now, What I want to tell you is, historically, if you go back and look at the use of the word through history, starting with barbacoa, going back to Spain in 1526, following it down through the first dictionary by Samuel Johnson, up through the books by James Beard, common use today, stop 20 people in the the grocery store and ask them what they're barbecuing, and you'll find that barbecue is a big umbrella word. It covers Korean barbecue, it covers Japanese barbecue, it covers Chinese barbecue. Southern barbecue is a style of barbecue, just like Chinese barbecue, and that's closest to what you're talking about. Southern, Southern barbecue, barbecue is and a Chinese barbecue. Word. No. Southern barbecue and Chinese barbecue are nothing like each other. Chinese no. barbecue. I didn't say they were. I didn't you say just they said were. it. They're all covered by the term barbecue. They both have the word barbecue in them. They're both a form of cooking over open flame. They're both a form of culinary uh, culinary style. Grilling is one. Open pit is another. You know, a lot of barbecue experts like to say they're holding up the tradition of barbecue. But the tradition of barbecue, going back to um, the uh, southern slaves, was an open pit. They dig a ditch. They throw in hot coals. They lay green and, um, green sticks across and whole animals on top of that. That's direct cooking. It's not indirect. It's open air. These guys are cooking in big steel tubes. There is nothing traditional about cooking in a big steel tube or a device with pellets and a computer attached to it where you set it and forget it. This is just a new form of barbecue. That's competition barbecue. It's a part of the whole world of barbecue that includes Korean and Chinese and uh, uh, South African, braai. Um, these are all forms of barbecue. Barbecue. You know, remember in high school you were taught 
that a rectangle has four sides and four right angles, and that a square is a rectangle, but not all rectangles are squares. This is a big category that encompasses many cooking styles. What really hacks me off, Greg, you know, and some of your listeners know, I used to be the wine critic for the Washington Post and the Chicago Tribune, and I got out of that world because the goddamn snobs ruined it. I got really sick of people saying, everybody knows Zinfandel's red, not pink, or white, and white Zinfandel. Well, I'm really sick of people saying, oh, you're not having a barbecue, you're grilling. Oh, come on. Don't, don't exclude. Jargon and slang like that is the, is the refuge of people who are trying to prove their inadequacies or o- overcome their inadequacies, exclude people. Let's open the tent of barbecue to what it really is and invite all those backyard grillers who are doing their ribeye steaks and their hamburgers and hot dogs and let them know that's a form of barbecue. Grilling is a form of barbecue. Not all barbecue is grilling, but grilling is a form of barbecue. Let's let them in the tent. Let's teach them how we barbecue. We use smoke. We use low temperatures. So what you're saying is... If you're going to draw that line so tight, what about... What's tight? Corgis in Memphis. What's they tight? They don't use wood at all. It's only charcoal. What about Dreamland, where they cook at 600 degrees? Are you going to go down to those two restaurants and beloved landmarks and tell them that's not barbecue? I'm not going to say whether it's good barbecue or bad barbecue. That's barbecue. We always say it's barbecue is outdoor cooking. Well, what about all these great restaurants on old, uh, on old hickory pits? Um, th- that's barbecue. It's a much bigger word than these purists think it is. Go ahead. I'll let you get a word in. Well, (laughs) you know, I'm going to agree with some of that. But here's the issue. You want to know what the issue is? You know what to do. Head on over to the BBQCentralShow.com. Link in today's show notes. Take you to the complete episode. I don't think this has ever been settled. I'm not sure if it ever will be settled. What do you think? Has anything changed since way back in 2012? Is barbecue and grilling different? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Drop me an email, John, J-O-N, at the BBQCentralShow.com. And until next time on the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less, I'm your host, John Zolberg. I cannot wait to talk to you again soon.